Alrighty, so here is a look at the new ALP Hi-Fi module. And uh, what it is is basically an external speaker to give you voice alerts for the ALP. So instead of just uh, some generic beeps and stuff to go through the menus and hear when you're getting shot, uh, you'll now get announcements of when the gun actually goes off. So here's a quick demo. Pro Laser 3, ahead. There you go. So it'll now actually tell you um, when you're getting shot. I've got it in pro mode, so when the gun is actually targeting me, it'll beep red. Pro Laser 3, ahead. And then when I stop shooting, it'll actually stop lighting up as well. And because I'm running quads uh, front and rear, I can get uh, directional alerts too. Pro Laser 3, behind. So the way it works is uh, you can see that's the control unit right there. Um, it comes with an external speaker now, which I actually have uh, in my dash. I took my dash out and put my speaker in there, and uh, that's where it is. To give you a look at the original control module, uh, where is it? Okay, so here is the, uh, the standard one. I'm going to go ahead and put them side by side. And the look is basically identical. They look almost exactly the same. Uh, there's only a few differences. Um, you'll see the blue light on the one on the right I'm using now. There's a little uh, black dot on this one, and that's one that I'd actually put on to help um, dim the blue light, because it can be pretty bright. Uh, there is a recent firmware release that actually allows you to now dim uh, that light in software rather than having to put a little darkened sticker there, which is really nice. So on the new module, um, I no longer have to do that, which is really handy. Uh, the old one, if you take a look at the back, um, you'll still see the uh, sticky tape that I was using. Um, on the back, right at the bottom there, you can see on the left there's that cutout. Uh, that is the slot for the speaker. And it used to be uh, just beeps and stuff coming out of the control module itself. Now because there is now an external speaker, that's no longer necessary. Also you'll notice the old module has one cable coming out of it. Uh, there's a little pinch in that cable just because of the way I had it installed. If you look closely at the cable now on this new module, you'll see there's the main one there, and then just to the right of it, there's another second cable. That's the thin uh, speaker cable which runs out to the speaker. Now as far as the uh, volume of the speaker, it's definitely loud. Um, when I had it to my head and I was testing stuff, it was well, a little too loud. That's not really what it's designed for. Um, I did a little bit of work kind of in my car to figure out a suitable spot and I wound up installing it in not the most audio friendly location. It's not somewhere like in the footwell where it would just kind of blast into the open air, but it's actually uh, tucked back behind here so the audio has to kind of just come out from wherever. So that does actually dampen the uh, volume a little bit. Uh, so it's good that the speaker itself is loud. Uh, there are five volume settings, one through five. Volume 5, Volume 4, Volume 3, Volume 2, Volume 1. So uh, what I'm finding here is uh, 5 is obviously the loudest. Um, when I've got my uh, top down or top up and the windows closed, like I just get in the car, 5 is a little bit loud when it first starts up. Fog lights flashing. Oops. I'll get to that in just a second. Volume 1, Volume, 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 Volume 5. Okay, so full volume, what I found is with uh, less than ideal speaker placement in terms of just giving it the best chance possible, um, I can actually still hear with the top down, cruising on the highway, windows down and everything, and my car is kind of noisy, it's a Miata, it's not like a quiet luxury car. Um, I can actually still hear alerts, which is great. Uh, if I crank up the music on the highway, at that point, if I'm blasting my stereo, I'm not gonna be able to hear the alerts. Um, but I can still see the lights when they go off here on my dash. Uh, just to give you a quick demo when I get shot. Pro so, Laser 3, ahead. Oh, actually, let me give you a little bit better one to actually make the lights stay on. There you go. Pro Laser 3, behind. So, and I'm just kind of shooting buildings in front of me and behind me, so it's not a perfect shot. But anyways, I do have that light there in my dash. And uh, it fires to let me know red ahead and uh, yellow is back behind. And then blue is armed again. So. I have it set to automatically rearm after a couple seconds. Um, yeah, uh, oh, okay, let's do a quick JTK as well. So I'm gonna shoot it and then I'm gonna press a button to JTK, so. Pro laser interference detection only. Okay, so when you press a button, either button, it'll actually go ahead and go to a JTK for you. Um, I have it set, is it still? Pro laser three, ahead. Let's do this. Interference detection only. 
Interference detection only. Okay, so it looks like it does actually rearm pretty quickly. You can hear the uh, the gun itself when it's shooting. Let's switch to rear. There we go. So I'm currently uh, JTK'd. It's detecting, but it's not actually jamming. Let's give it a couple seconds here of not shooting. And there you go. So now it's rearmed. And now if I reshoot. Pro Laser 3, ahead. Okay, so it looks like there is a couple second gap between JTK and... Uh, when it automatically rearms. Um, overall, I really like it. It's so much better now being able to go through the menu and like there's this menu button, um, pressing this without actually going into the menu. Fog lights off. There is a feature and I'm hoping they do update this. There's kind of been talk of it, of updating the menu button. Fog lights on. Uh, there is an accessory you can get that actually hooks into your fog lights. Um, I'm not using that here and something I would personally like to see, I think would be pretty cool is if they made this uh, the equivalent of just go ahead and set your jammers to receive mode only instead of jamming if I want to just say oh hey look there's a cop and I want to kill my jammers before I get shot fog lights flashing I would love to be able to press a button and go ahead and set my jammers to receive mode um, it was a feature I had with my uh, blinder HP 905s and I love that feature um, and that way in case I do get shot I'm already uh, cut my jammers and that's really useful um, also compared to the blinders, there is one feature that I really, really like. Uh, you know, obviously in addition to the gun announcements, um, I like the fact that I can control the dimness here. I used to have my blinders and I had uh, the CPU and I'd have to press a button to just manually turn off all the lights. Here I can set the brightness of that whatever I want, which is pretty cool. Um, but one of the features I really, really like is what happens if you get a really brief, brief detection. Like let's say you pick up scatter and you're not actually the one being targeted yet, but you pick up just a really quick burst of LiDAR as it happens to bounce off another car and it hits you. So I'm gonna simulate um, just a really quick shot, kind of like the equivalent of quick trigger for radar. So let's do that. Pro Laser 3, ahead. Now as you saw that red light, it was just a really quick flash. It was a really quick shot. Uh, not enough necessarily, maybe even to register a speed. That could be just a few pulses that it caught bouncing off of whatever. Anyways, what I want to point out is the fact that it actually announced the gun there. Um, when I had my blinders, there would be times when I would pick up a really quick burst like that and I would get no gun announcement ID, uh, whether it's a false or if it's a legit signal. And so if I'm picking up something potentially like scatter with my blinders, I wouldn't necessarily know if it's a real gun or if it's a false. And uh, I've tried a couple different guns with my laser tester. And uh, what I'm finding is here, this guy. Um, I can simulate a bunch of guns, and what I'm finding is like if I just do, it's not going to work in here since my jammers are outside, but if I just do a really quick shot, um, it'll actually announce what gun it picked up, even if it was just for a short time and a few pulses. So that's actually a really helpful way to differentiate um, legit scatter versus just potential falses. So based on the pulse train, it's able to still give you the gun ID. So that's a feature that I really like. Um, it is still lacking the ability to go in and uh, set your jammers into receive mode, um, just at a quick press. Uh, hopefully, you know, if that's a popular feature, it'll get changed and it'll get implemented. But overall, I really like this uh, new change. I definitely recommend it. Um, yeah, so anyways, we've got the uh, top down right now and it's 34 degrees. <laughs> so it was cold driving around and doing testing to do uh, volume testing, but it is definitely loud. Um, it may not necessarily be able, able to overpower, you know, your entire car stereo if you've got your music blasting. Um, but, you know, it is what it is. Other than that, it's going to be awesome if you got, even in my car, convertible, top down, windows down, driving on the highway. Uh, with the volume set at 5 and with the speaker tucked into the dash itself, I can still hear the gun announcement. So it is pretty cool. It's definitely louder than the original one. It's plenty loud. And uh, if you've got an ALP and you're not using the Bluetooth, perhaps, um, I would definitely recommend this as an upgrade to the standard module. So anyways, there you go. There is a quick look at the new Hi-Fi module for the anti-laser priority.